Hi, I'm Mike Clossy, Director of Forestry with the Oregon Forest Resources Institute. Welcome to Sustainable Wood from Sustainable Forests. This video explores the concepts of sustainable forestry and the benefits of wood. Some of the environmental advantages of wood can be summarized as sequester, store, substitute, and sustain. Forests sequester carbon. Wood products store carbon. Substituting wood for other building materials reduces carbon emissions, and managing forests sustainably ensures this is a long-term approach. Wood is one of nature's most beautiful building materials. People love the look of wood. Building with wood can create warm, inviting interiors. In fact, wooden interiors can help reduce stress, increase worker productivity, and improve mental health. The use of natural building materials like wood is known as biophilia, or love of life. Wood is the only major building material we have that is renewable. Trees grow, are harvested, and then new trees are planted in their place to start the cycle of growth over again. Reforestation and sustainable forest management ensure our long-term supply of wood. Trees may come and go, but managing a forest requires a long-term vision that takes into account all of the other things that a forest provides besides wood products. Trees absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and through the process of photosynthesis convert it to sugars and lock carbon away in wood. 50% of the dry weight of wood is carbon taken from our atmosphere. Even after a tree is turned into a wood product, the carbon remains in the wood and is stored for the life of the product. Life cycle analysis and environmental product declarations of wood products have documented their carbon storage and other environmental benefits. Forest sustainability involves more than just a long-term supply of wood. The Forest Sustainability Triangle shows this by including three types of benefits that must be considered for forest management to be truly sustainable. Ecological, social, and economic benefits are all important. Ecological benefits include maintenance of the basic ecological role forests play in cleaning air and water and providing a variety of wildlife habitat. Carbon sequestration and biodiversity are also important ecological benefits. Social benefits include the strong connection that people have to the forest. Recreational access needs to be considered, as this is how the general public most directly interacts with the forest. The visual appeal of forests is another social benefit, as well as the public services provided through tax dollars paid by forest landowners and forest product companies. Economic benefits include the timber revenue forests generate for landowners and forest product companies. This sustains jobs in lumber and plywood milling, logging, trucking, and other forest-related industries, especially in rural communities. Sustainable forestry can be defined as managing forests to produce an array of benefits now and into the future. This is often referred to as stewardship, a forest steward manages natural resources to meet present and future needs. Before the concept of sustainability came along, forests were often mined rather than managed. Instead of planting new trees after logging, we just moved on to the next stand of timber. In the early years, sustainable forestry was only about producing timber sustainably, but has evolved to include sustaining healthy ecosystems. An important concept of sustainable timber management is that harvest and growth must be balanced. If we cut more wood than we grow, forests will be diminished over time. To avoid this, we measure forest growth and keep track of timber harvest. This chart, based on U.S. Forest Service data from 2017, shows timber net growth and harvest for the U.S. and Oregon in billions of cubic feet. Net tree growth equals gross growth minus tree mortality. This can be thought of as the maximum potential timber harvest. In both Oregon and the U.S., slightly more than half of the timber net growth is harvested each year. This means that our standing timber volume is actually increasing over time. 
When we talk about timber harvest versus growth as measures of forest sustainability, who owns the forest makes a huge difference. In Oregon, the federal government, shown in orange, owns 60% of the forest land and accounts for only 14% of the harvest. Private landowners, shown in the two shades of green, own 34% of the forest land and produce 76% of the state's timber harvest. When we look at growth, mortality, and harvest charts, we see that overall timber harvest accounts for 39% of gross growth. However, the harvest ranges from 8% of gross growth on federal lands to 77% of gross growth on private lands. To look at sustainable forestry in action, we will focus on four key concepts. Keeping forests as forests, reforestation after timber harvest, managing for biodiversity, and water protection. Keeping forests as forests is the first step to sustainability. Conversion of forests to other land uses, such as agriculture or urban development, is a major global problem that is commonly called deforestation. Oregon has laws to conserve forest land and has been very successful in preventing forest loss. However, many believe that the key to keeping forests intact is to have strong markets for forest products. Stable timber markets help keep forest management as a profitable venture for landowners and reduces the likelihood that they convert their land to non-forest uses. Once forest land is no longer forest land, many of the ecological and social benefits that forests provide are lost. Reforestation is another key part of forest sustainability. Trees must be planted to replace those harvested and a variety of tree species should be used. Oregon and many other states have laws that require replanting after timber harvest. Planting may not be needed if natural regeneration can be planned for. Many important tree species, such as Douglas fir, grow best in even age stands, which is where all the trees are about the same age. Douglas fir seedlings need direct sunlight to grow quickly. This is what would happen naturally when trees grow back after a disturbance, such as a wildfire killed most of the older trees. Clear cutting, a type of timber harvest where most of the standing trees are logged at the same time mimics these natural disturbances. But responsible, sustainable forestry requires planting seedlings after logging instead of letting trees seed in on their own. Managing forests for biodiversity is important for sustainability. Biodiversity refers to the variety and number of different species of animals and plants in an ecosystem. Managing forests to create an array of wildlife habitats is one way to promote biodiversity. Specific features of a diverse landscape include a variety of ages, sizes, and species of trees, snags or dead trees, and down logs, trees and vegetation along streams, and a variety of shrubs and other native plants. Some species of animals do best in young forests, some in middle-aged forests, some in older forests, and some will thrive anywhere. Snags provide a source of food for woodpeckers and other insect foragers, and homes for many species of birds, bats, mammals, and amphibians. Trees growing along streams provide cover near drinking water. Flowering plants provide food sources for pollinators and seed and nut foragers. A variety of biodiversity is important across the larger landscape which is to say that not every acre of forest needs to be managed for all potential habitats. Biodiversity works as a quilt over a landscape. Water protection is essential for sustainable forestry. Many municipalities depend on forested watersheds as their drinking water source. In Oregon, studies have shown that the highest quality water comes from forests, including forests managed for timber production. Protecting drinking water sources during forest operations includes preventing sediment, chemicals, and excess runoff from reaching streams. Stream buffers are a crucial tool in source water protection. Buffers are sections of trees and vegetation around water bodies. 
within these buffers, timber harvest is either limited or restricted. Forest management is regulated by government in many places. Nations, states, and counties can all have their own set of forest practice laws. National laws are common in Europe. The United States has national environmental laws, including the Endangered Species and Clean Water Acts. There are also laws that govern the management of federal lands, such as the national forests. However, regulation of forest practices on state and private lands is generally done at the state level. The West Coast states of Oregon, Washington, and California have all had comprehensive Forest Practices Acts since the 1970s to regulate forest management on private and state lands. Major regulations in the Oregon Forest Practices Act include reforestation rules require that areas where trees have been logged must be planted with tree seedlings within two years of when the timber was harvested. The maximum clear-cut size allowed is 120 acres. Dead trees and down logs must be left to provide wildlife habitat at the rate of two each per acre for all timber harvest units 25 acres or larger. Trees must be left standing on each side of fish bearing and domestic water supply streams. When herbicides are used to control vegetation that competes with tree seedlings, applicators must avoid using these chemicals near streams, homes, and schools. Road building must be done in such a way as to limit sediment from reaching streams through erosion or landslides. Stream crossings must be built to allow fish passage and to carry runoff from a 50-year storm event. In addition to following all applicable forest regulations, many landowners want to demonstrate their commitment to sustainability by participating in a forest certification program. In the U.S., there are three main forest certification systems, the Forest Stewardship Council, the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, and the American Tree Farm System. Forest Stewardship Council, or FSC, was established in 1993 and is used worldwide. It currently certifies about 35 million acres in the U.S. and less than 200,000 acres in Oregon. FSC has 10 sustainable forestry principles which guide development of national and regional standards used by independent contractors to certify forest land. FSC management is characterized by small timber harvest unit size, retention of some mature forest during harvesting, and minimizing use of forest chemicals. FSC has a label that can be stamped on products such as lumber or on packaging. Sustainable Forestry Initiative, or SFI, was established in 1994 and primarily serves large industrial forest landowners in the U.S. and Canada. It currently certifies 67 million acres in the U.S., including 3.8 million acres in Oregon. SFI has 14 sustainable forestry principles, which guide development of standards used by independent contractors to certify forest land. SFI limits on timber harvest unit size, forest retention, and use of forest chemicals are based on state-level regulations and best management practices. SFI has a label that can be stamped on products such as lumber or on packaging. SFI certified wood is readily available in the marketplace. American Tree Farm System, or Tree Farm, was established in 1941 and has been recognized as a forest certification system since the mid-1990s. It currently certifies about 28 million acres in the U.S., including over 700,000 in Oregon. Tree Farm has eight sustainable forestry standards that include performance measures used by volunteer tree farm inspectors to certify forest land. Tree farm limits on timber harvest unit size, forest retention, and use of forest chemicals are based on state level regulations and best management practices. Tree farm is geared toward family forest landowners. You love building with wood, and you should. It's not only beautiful, but ecologically responsible. 
you can feel good about wood coming from places like Oregon, where forest protection laws and multiple forest certification systems ensure that the wood supply is coming from forests that are truly sustainable. This virtual forest sustainability tour has been brought to you by the Oregon Forest Resources Institute, or OFRI. OFRI is dedicated to advancing public understanding of forests, forest management, and forest products, and encouraging sustainable forestry through landowner education.